Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to SB Rocket. Uh, now this is going to be a very quick little video just me showing you what this thing is because SB Rocket is currently in like the pre-alpha state or something. It is a game by Hamish Dunn apparently and it's a build your own tank simulator sandbox kind of thing. So there are scenarios as you can see the different things you can do. There's going to be missions in the game but the, the core of it is the sandbox. You can also create your own faction, which I think is a very fascinating little thing, but for now let's go over to the sandbox and then just show you what the game is all about. Um, like I said, it is in pre-alpha, so please bear in mind any of the bugs, uh, problems with the UI, crashes, anything along those lines, although I haven't had much problems so far, just saying if I do, it's all down to that. This is more a tech demo than anything actually, you know, uh, remotely resembling a finished product, but... Let's actually take a look at some of the tank building mechanics and uh, how in-depth and, and detailed this game goes. So here we see our tank and the way you shape it is I think kind of genius. Um, you just push and pull, right? I think this is awesome. Now you can create some monstrosities like this or you can create something a little bit more sensible. Um, thing is though, everything you do affects the stats of the tank. And this is a, you know, especially for a pre-alpha build, this is a very in-depth. So putting aside the fact that you can rename all the different things, what strikes my fancy quite a lot is all the different stats in the tank that you can manually change. Uh, and you can change them by dragging it on the tank and going for an, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing thing, or you can just put them in here. What do you want the length of your tank to be? What do you want the width of your tank to be? Uh, all of these things simultaneously as you play with them influence the actual design in terms of weight, speed, characteristics, um, internal storage space, all of these things. Uh, also there is armor thickness and uh, let's see, how do we do that? Well you can also change the slant angle here which uh, well you know currently is a Okay, let's just say that that's not the most sensible looking thing, but you can do it. Um, matter of fact, don't the STRVs and, and stuff like this from Sweden have that kind of look? Yeah, anyways, I, I guess you can do that. Um, also, where is the... Uh, so this is the base. If we go over to the turret... Change, it, change how offset it is to the front or rear. Let's, let's keep it about there, I think. And then you can fix the turret. Quite fascinating. Um, but... You can also do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having way too much fun with it. Um, Yes, the sliders are ridiculous, but they're supposed to, they're kind of supposed to be, right? Um, they're giving you freedom, they're giving you the option to do whatever you want to do. The biggest problem currently with the game, and I've tested it a little bit, uh, the biggest problem currently with it is the movement and the physics. They're not what I would call amazing, but uh, the game does come with some designs already made. So let's open up the Centurion. Just to give you an idea how much you can customize this thing and what you can do to it, in this engine game slash sandbox thing, you can make this. You can make a Centurion shockingly accurate to the real thing, and uh, you can play around with it. Now, like I said, where the problems come in, uh, sorry, no, uh, how do you, ah, here we go, test out the design. Where the problems come in is the movement. The tanks are extremely slippery. This doesn't feel like driving a tank. Mind you, like I said, this is pre-alpha. This, I'm pretty sure that no mind has been paid to actually have a vehicle perform and drive in the map. Every, all the work so far has gone into actually being able to make your vehicles and adding all the assets and stuff like that. But I'll give you a, an example of how slippery vehicles are. Okay, I'm turning left. I'm now going to stop turning left. Now. See that? Okay, let's, let's do it again. 
Uh, I'm reversing. I'm now going to stop reversing. Yeah. Again, turning left. And... Stop. It's really not all that responsive. Um, also, the gun... Really underwhelming, I gotta say. Um, the, the reload animation and all that is nice. Um, you have a fuel uh, amount, like how much fuel do you have, that is measured in the game. That's all terrific, but... Um, that is seriously, seriously underwhelming. So in terms of the practical side of things, yes, the game isn't all that terrific. And this can happen. The suspension doesn't really work, in that the tank is now stuck, um, and it really shouldn't be stuck in a, in a situation like this, right? Um, yeah. So that's the, the biggest problem with the game in terms of playability, though apparently shooting can unstuck you, so you know, when in doubt, fire away. Uh, how do we spawn a... pretty sure there was a button for this. Oh, that just turned off the engine. Well, mind you. Can we do the the smoke thing? No. That option. Could have sworn there was a button here to spawn in uh, enemies. I'm going to have to look it up. Sorry, really quickly. Uh, key mapping. Debug? No? Command team, grab, return to design, fire ignition, abandon vehicle. There was a button, I swear to you, you can do it. Um, show detail, no. Mirror on X, that's fascinating, I want to try that. Select alternate action, maybe, who knows. Uh, pause menu, return to designer, grab. Control vehicle, cycle next vehicle. Maybe. Uh, oh yeah, there, there is this, obviously, but... Uh, nope. Yeah, anyways. Uh, doesn't matter. You can spawn enemies and the AI is... Eh, it can shoot at you, I suppose. Uh, might as well actually try one of the scenarios, uh, for that matter. So, the objective is to win the battle. Let's try and win the battle in... a panther. Well, we are on the dunes map. Insufficient force to aim the cannon. Add a bigger motor or reduce the cannon's mass. So... the thing that comes pre-made doesn't work. Well, you know, it kind of works. Actually, the gun, on, the gun on the Panther looks a little bit better. It does have some serious problems going up slopes, apparently. Um, whoops. With a huge engine on the Panther, I, I didn't expect this to be a problem. I mean, it's not exactly what I would call a mountain, but okay. Oh, we're getting shot at. We're getting shot at some more. Fear not, though. German engineering is uh, all incapable of withstanding... Whatever the hell is coming at us, those are very old tanks. And I can't aim the gun, which I just realised. Uh, okay, ramming speed, I suppose. Oh, can I literally not move the gun? No. Okay, ramming speed it is. Let's see what happens. Well, I took a hit. A pretty nasty hit, I think, considering it's the rear, but... Yes, 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 I'm doing it. Can I actually flip this bloody thing? Probably not. Am I still going to continue trying? Yes. Uh, that didn't kill it. That actually didn't kill it. 
at this range I would expect a shot like that to knock most enemies out, but apparently this was not the case. Okay, here we go, this should do it. Yep, there we go. A Model 1 just got destroyed, and you get the idea. Uh, like I said, the whole combat part, not great, not very done. However, uh, there is the showroom, and Juggernaut, how is this different than the actual build room? It's not. It's just a different place for you to build your things, which I appreciate. I do, don't get me wrong. I just feel like they could have been in the same sort of menu, but eh, never mind. Uh, let's go over to the sandbox proper and um, try and design our own, th our own tank, shall we? Because this is where the sort of meat and potatoes of the game is. Um, and let's go over to, I mean, mobility crew and all of that. You do actually need crew space, hatches for the crew. It's all very detailed. Like I said, the biggest letdown so far in the pre-alpha is the combat. But like I said, that is for future, that is to be ad addressed in a, you know, in, a, in a future version of the game. For now, though, look at all these things. Let's focus on the positives now. Viewports for the driver, the gunner, the commander, antennas for the radio. Currently, there's only one, but, you know. Um, stowage for ammunition. Crew hatches for entering and exiting the vehicle. Very important. Uh, different utilities. These are just fluff. They don't actually serve any purpose. Um, Anti-infantry stuff. I don't think you can shoot it yet, but I'm pretty sure this will be a thing later down the line. Commander cupolas. So far, only two. Again, it's not the most detailed designer in the world currently. Again, it's, uh, again, apparently my new favorite word. Um, but like I mentioned before, this is just a tech demo for what this game is supposed to be. Uh, and then you can, of course, paint it. Um, I would very much like the ability to paint manually, like bit by bit. Uh, what I mean is to take a tiny little brush and go over all of these things manually paint them with uh, different colors and then, you know, uh, do some silly things. Uh, there is also decals, as you can see, with the uh, various flags. Uh, there is this, which I'm actually not quite sure how you put them on the tank. Ah, there you go. You do it like that. Except it won't do it. Place source and select it R and B to enable design. I, no, you, you don't understand. I'm doing it, but it's not gonna. Ah, okay. Let's take a look at the firepower then. So you have light mantlets, medium mantlets. Check out these look the same. Um. Well, look. Y yes, and then there's the heavy. Mantlets. The game appears to have a problem with... Ah, there we go. Okay. So, anyways, gun mounts, and then we have the actual cannons. Uh, now, I love how the actual design process for the cannon is separate. Like, here's the cannon, then you stick it onto the thing. Genius. Um, and it is multi-staged as well. You get the... Um, muzzle. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to realize what the name of this thing is. So you get the muzzle. I love the little effect that plays with the with the camo when you do it. I think that's really neat. Uh, there's the gunner sight, which I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to put on the tank, but I guess that'd be maybe a bit easier to put it later down the line. And then what about the caliber of the gun? Well, this is where, again, you can just click and drag, or you can input manually the exact length of the gun you want. So let's say I want this to be a 122mm gun. That is what a 122mm gun looks like. But it can also be a... Well, actually, uh, this is meters. This is not millimeters. This is length. Um, why not make it a 3 meter long gun? Look at that. Um, actually, I think if I increase it a little bit more to like 3.5, this is the gun that the Panther gets in World of Tanks. Quite a ridiculous looking thing, but anyways. Um, caliber. This is what I was talking about. This is what I, I wanted to talk about. Let's say I want to make it a 122 millimeter gun. Look at that. It's ridiculous. It would never go on a tank like this, but we can do it. 
Uh, and then you also have the stats down here, but a belt, uh, based on the shell length, as well as the caliber of the gun, um, the, the, the performances will vary in terms of recoil, uh, velocity doesn't seem to change, which is kind of interesting. Um, velocity doesn't change ever, apparently, yet at least. Um, Pre-alpha, pre-alpha. Uh, let's get 200 with 17mm shells, and then obviously you have different things like damage, fragments, base reload time, etc, etc. Um, and then here we go, the ammunition. So this is how much ammunition the tank is going to carry. You have armor piercing, armor piercing is high explosive, uh, this is st uh, st storage in the hull, and this is storage in the turret. Um, you can carry 300 rounds of armor piercing ammunition in the turret. How you're going to fit it in is beyond me, but that is something you can build. Lots of freedom in this game, you just need to actually design it so that it works and fits uh, within the logic of the game. So let's do like a couple of... Uh, let's do a couple of exhausts like this. Can we do four like this? That is the weirdest looking exhaust you have ever seen. And then... We cross the streams, make it look badass. Um, you, you never do this for a reason, but, you know, in this game, currently, that doesn't seem to be um, all that important. Anyways, uh, I don't want to show you too much here. I mean, I've shown you basically everything, but... Um, you can make your own tank, obviously, even now with this limited system. Um, again, it's gonna be, like I said, limited. Um, this is really the, the, the sort of peak showcase with, with these kind of models of, of what you can make. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it isn't functional yet, pre-alpha, but um, I think it's, this is more so a proof of, uh, of an idea than anything else, and honestly, I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, the market is wide open as far as I know. There isn't a uh, specifically tank-oriented um, build them and showcase them style game like this. Uh, I've played a couple recently on the channel, and uh, in one of them you could make tanks, but it was really centered around making all sorts of wacky vehicles with different parts. Um, this seems to be a accurate, well, it strives to be at least an accurate simulation of trying to construct a tank and design it. Um, something along these lines we supposedly will have in Arts of Iron Suit, the upcoming DLC, where you get to design your own tank. Obviously not to this extent, but um, other than, than like, like I said, those two games, I don't know much. Or I don't know of many examples, or I'm really honest, I don't know of any other example of, of games doing something like this. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Like I said, very quick little video just showing you that this exists, more so than anything else. Um, currently, like I said, it is just a tech demo more than anything else, um, just showing you the idea. Effectively, the execution is uh, yet to happen, really. This is just, uh, you know, if you have a cool idea that you want to show to your friends, you don't know, make the entire thing, you just, you know, give them a, a rough sketch of what is to come and what, what they are to expect. And this is kind of that, um, except for a, you know, actual video game that is hopefully going to be released. Um, if you want to support the game, I'll put some links down in the description below where you can check it out. Um, give the guy some support, give the, the, the developer uh, financial support if you feel like you are in a position to invest in something like this. Um, the maps look yeah, actually fairly decent, especially for, uh, for, um, so for such an early stage. I understand most of it over there is empty, but little, little things that I've seen so far, the trenches, the dunes and stuff like that. The game visually looks pretty darn nice, and um, I think it, it has a bright future if um, if it gets polished well, and uh, you know, if it, if it just adds enough content and depth, I think that, that'll... Um, the amount of modules that the game adds, and the amount of different... Ugh, I hate this. Maybe if I shoot, I can... Yeah, this is like a requel to unstuck me. Anyways, I feel like if the game adds enough modules, if we go over to, for example, mobility, um, let's say, track, 
axe or engine or something. Um, if you add, like, currently it's uh, light, medium, heavy. If you add a whole bunch of different engines by different manufacturers, different um, companies, uh, if in terms of firepower, the cannon isn't just determined by... Actually, it has a sight. The cannon isn't just determined by its length and... Um, and with the, you add actually more stuff here and different cannons to choose from and obviously a host of different options in terms of muzzles, gun sights, um, more antennas, more everything over here and if, uh, the game can cover more modern tanks as well as World War II tanks which it kind of I think already does because you get the Chieftain um, which, I, which I think is pretty neat so, oh sorry not the, the Chieftain, the Centurion which okay is not a exactly a modern tank, it's a late war tank, it's a post-war tank, if we're honest. Um, let's open it up. As you can see, the, you know, if we can make leopards in this, if we can make, hell, why not even up to the T-72 or the T-80 or something? Uh, and if, if you can add explosive reactive armor and stuff like that, I think the game has a very, very nice and, and, and bright future, obviously, it will depend on how the development process goes and, and financially how the game does, but um, yeah, anyways, be that as it may, thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen, this has just been a quick little demo to let you know this exists, uh, I'll see you all next time, have fun, take care, and uh, if, you wanna, if you're interested in the game and want to check out more of it, uh, links will be down in the description below to uh, some useful pages for it, anyways, until then, have fun, take care, or rather until next time, have fun, take care, and bye bye.